Hello, my name is Dane Cobain, and today I'm going to be reading for you an excerpt from my novel Meat. I want to give a little bit of a preface first. Uh, so the idea behind this exhibition is to showcase some of the work we've done during lockdown. And uh, well, I, I have been keeping busy during lockdown. I've actually started a new uh, radio show called The Art Show on Wickham Sound as well. Every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Don't forget to tune in. So that takes up a lot of time. Um, but I've also been pretty busy writing and pretty busy editing as well. So the problem we have here, I've been writing the first draft of a novel called Boys in Blue, which will be the third book in my lightfold sort of quirky, cozy detective series. But the problem is, is it's all first draft and I don't really want to share it too much. Um, so we're going to have a little section here of a book called Meat, which is uh, a book that I've been editing throughout lockdown. And it's been a very strange book to edit during lockdown because it's uh, set on a factory farm and follows what happens after a de disease outbreak. So um, yeah, it's pretty prescient. And obviously because I've been doing the editing during lockdown, I've been able to go back in and add a few references to our modern times as well. So uh, this is a previously unreleased, uh, never before heard or seen section of meat. It's also third draft, which is the final draft before uh, publication, so it may change slightly for the book. So we're joining John McDonald, who is the CEO of Sunnyvale Factory Farm, as he's talking on a radio to Lieutenant Colonel Ben Runciman of the British Army. Uh, the Sunnyvale survivors are all holed up in the admin building, and uh, we're learning a little bit more of the nature of the disease. Hello, McDonald said. Is anyone there? Sorry about that, Sunnyvale, Runciman replied. There was a shake to his voice, a genuine shake, and they could believe it. He sounded sorry. We, uh, we underestimated the animals and were taken by surprise. A dozen of my men were wounded. Several of them were killed. I'm sorry to hear that, MacDonald replied. Any idea what's going on? I was hoping that you could tell us. That's a big negative, MacDonald said. We're still working on it. Tom Copeland, our vet here, thinks there's something wrong with them. Some disease or something. That's as much as we've got. What's the situation on your end? The quarantine's still holding, Runciman said. So far, at least. But we've moved people away in the surrounding areas, just as a precaution, you understand. Honestly, I've never seen anything like this. I'm surprised you guys are still going. We've had our moments, MacDonald admitted, thinking about the employees he'd lost since the outbreak and the faint splash of gore and viscera across the grass below the gantry where the remains of Greg Hamsey were still lying out there in the darkness. What's wrong with the animals? We don't know, Runciman said. The best I can give you is a guess. That's more than we've got, MacDonald replied. Give me the bad news. There was a pause for a moment, and MacDonald found himself struggling with a troubling thought that they might have lost contact again. The signal was weak at best, and the incoming storm was playing havoc with it. But then the voice filtered back through again, and MacDonald realised that Lieutenant Colonel Ben Runciman had been stalling for time. The disease is complicated, Runciman said eventually. We're still carrying out analysis in the lab, but we're working on the basis that it's a hybrid of COVID-19 and foot and mouth. It certainly resembles it in the early stages. MacDonald's head whirred around on its shoulders like he was Reagan McNeil in The Exorcist, until his eyes alighted on Tom Copeland. He beckoned the man forwards and gave him the handset. Tom Copeland here, he said. Sunnyvale's veterinarian. Did you say foot and mouth? Aptheia pizuticae and coronavirus. That's correct, Dr. Copeland, Runciman said. Only it's a mutation from hell. It has an incubation period of a week or so where no symptoms are present and the beasts pass on the infection. Always a problem where large numbers of animals are gathered in a single place. But Aptheia pizuticae only affects animals with a cloven hoof, Copeland said. And whatever the hell this is, it's affecting all of them. Like I said, Runciman told him, it's a mutation from hell. After the incubation period, the animals come down with a fever and start to get blisters inside their mouths. Classic foot and mouth to begin with. But then the virus changes, and it's only at this point that we can tell the two apart. The first stage is a coma, unlike any coma we've seen before. The heart and the lungs stop functioning, and the brain goes into a kind of suspended animation. After a couple of days, the virus has wiped out memory, emotion, personality, and all that other stuff that makes an animal unique, until it's left with just the most basic drives. The desire to eat, sleep, drink, and reproduce. Sound familiar? It would explain why the animals are on a rampage, Copeland admitted. But we haven't seen any comas here. Unless... Unless what? 
We normally check the pens every couple of days for dead animals and ship them off to the crematorium, Copeland said. But what with one thing or another, we missed a check. Then there's your answer, Runciman said. If what you're saying is true, Copeland reasoned, an outbreak could have occurred without us knowing. Even if an animal was infected, we'd mistake it for dead and burn the body. But the crematorium has been quiet for a couple of days. And so the animals rose back up. I don't buy it, Copeland said. You're telling me that we're dealing with what? Zombie animals? Not zombies, Runciman said. They're... The signal cut out again, and John MacDonald took the opportunity to rush forward and to grab the handset back from Copeland. They waited for the signal to come back, but there was nothing, and so John MacDonald turned the dials and adjusted the frequency. It took them a while, but they managed to re-establish the connection on a higher frequency, but the signal was bad and they didn't hold up much hope that it would last for long. Actually die. What was that? MacDonald asked. Please repeat, we're losing signal here. Roger that, Sunnyvale, Runciman replied. Then I'll make this quick. You have to understand the nature of the animals. They're not dead or undead, at least in the conventional sense. Your boy's been watching too many movies. Those animals of yours are still alive. They're just behaving like mindless drones. They'll die just as easily as they would have died before the infection, only they don't feel pain. After the coma, the animals wake back up, but by then they've changed. They've turned into vicious, bloodthirsty killing machines. A chill seemed to settle over the Sunnyvale survivors, but perhaps it was just the wind from the storm as it drifted inexorably across the sky towards them. How is this disease transmitted? MacDonald asked. I was getting to that, Runciman replied. As far as we can tell, it's transmitted through the consumption of infected flesh or from a bite from another infected animal. It can be transferred through sexual intercourse as well. The conditions are just right for the disease to spread, but there's worse. What? About that, Runciman said. Understand that we're still investigating and experimenting. I understand, MacDonald replied, but I don't give a damn. Tell me what you know, and if you don't know, tell me what you suspect. The static crackled again, and Runciman's voice faded out for a second. Lifespan is significantly reduced, he was saying, but only due to natural accidents and their poor nutrition. Do you copy? Negative, MacDonald said. Please repeat. The virus can be spread through aerosols and through contact with contaminated equipment, vehicles and clothing, Runciman said. We suspected as much. That's why we were called in to blockade the facility in the first place. The disease is too dangerous, too contagious, and it's mutating. Our lab boys are still carrying out tests and will update you as soon as we can. But we have reason to believe that the disease could spread to... The signal cut out again, and this time they couldn't get it back. The wind was picking up and the first drops of rain were starting to strike against the rooftop. The storm was on its way, and the crippled admin building had no heating or electricity. The air was already whipping through the smashed doors and inside the building, and it was only going to get colder, windier, and more unpleasant. MacDonald scowled and gave the order. Pack up the radio and take it inside, he said. We'll try it again tomorrow. So there you have it. That is a little section of meat. Uh, I started writing this book in 2015, and it's turned out to be disturbingly prophetic. Uh, I just have the last final round of edits and proofreading to go through and it should hopefully be out later in 2020, possibly October, November time. It would be pretty good to have it out in time for Halloween. So I'm going to try and do that. Thanks a lot for listening and uh, enjoy the rest of your visit to the, uh, the lockdown exhibition. <laughs>